the Noctua NF F12 IPPC 3000 PWM is the loudest fan I've ever tested. But does it move the most amount of air? No, no it does not. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and graphics cards. Before I get onto the overview, to have full disclosure, I did buy this fan myself to test and review. So as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. Meaning if you do end up liking this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really does help a lot. YouTube does force me to say this in every video, just FYI. Okay, let's take a quick look at the NF F12 lineup. So there are quite a few Noctua fans with the name F12. There is the NF F12 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1500. There is the NF F12 PWM Chromax Black, which also has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of 1500, but this time it's all black rather than the normal Noctua beige color. There is the NF F12 5V PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 1500, but this fan is rated for five volt operation, meaning it's not meant for a standard motherboard. The NF F12 5V, so this one only has a three pin connector, but does still have a max rated RPM of 1500. And again, this is rated for five volt operation, so not meant for a standard motherboard. There is the NF F12 IPPC 2000 that has a three pin fan connector and a max rated RPM of 2000. There is the NF F12 IPPC 2000 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2000, and I guess that's it because there is also the NF F12 IPPC 2000 IP67 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2000. The IP67 refers to increased protection against water and dust. There is the NF F12 IPPC 3000 PWM, which has a four pin PWM connector and a max rated RPM of, you guessed it, 3000. There is the Noctua NF F12 IPPC 24V 2000 SP IP67 PWM, which is one hell of a mouthful. It has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 2000. It is rated for 24 volt operation, meaning again, not really meant for a standard motherboard. Again, it has the IP67, so it has the increased protection against water and dust and SP stands for single phase motor. So this does have a different motor than the standard Noctua fans. And finally, there is the Noctua NF F12 IPPC 24V 3000 SP IP67 PWM. Holy crap, these names. It has a four pin PWM connector, a max rated RPM of 3000. It is again rated for 24 volt operation. It has the increased protection against water and dust, and again, has a single phase motor. Okay, back to what I actually tested, which just to confirm was the Noctua NF F12 Industrial IPPC 3000 PWM. So it does have a max rated RPM of 3000. There are seven blades on the fan. It does have Noctua's SSO2 bearing. This is a 12 volt DC fan. And again, it is PWM, so it does have that four pin PWM connector and it has a six year warranty. Now, before I got onto the results of my testing, I wanted to be very clear that this is based off a sample size of one. So this isn't the exact performance you'll get, but it should be relatively close and help you understand what to expect. Okay, starting with the PWM range. So with this fan plugged into my motherboard at 100% PWM, it is showing an RPM of 3150-ish. At 50% PWM, this motherboard is showing this fan at 1680 RPM, or 1680-ish RPM. At 0% PWM, this fan stops spinning, so an RPM of zero. The fan kicks on at only 1% PWM, 
The motherboard isn't showing the actual RPM speed here, but I took my tachometer and measured it at 280-ish RPM. So all in all, a really good RPM range for this fan. And that's it for the RPM range. But before I move on to my standardized testing, if you are or do appreciate all the testing I've done here, could you please consider supporting the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description? All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Now, if you do have any questions on how I test the fans, please watch my fan testing methodology video. I go over most everything there. I'll have a card along the top and I'll also have it linked in the description. But please note, I have updated the cooler that I use for the CPU cooling performance to the Frost Commander 140. This way I can test 140 and 120 millimeter fans on the same cooler so that everything's just a little bit more apples to apples. And one last thing before I go on to the results, I use DC power to test the fans. So most Noctua fans don't actually work below five volts if you're using DC. So I won't be showing results for four volts for this fan. Starting with the DBA and RPM, at six volts, I measured a DBA of 37.2, and that had an RPM of 1585. At eight volts, the DBA went up to 44.2, while the RPM went up to 2115. At 10 volts, I measured a sound level of 49.9 dBA, and that had an RPM of 2610. Finally, at 12 volts, the DBA went up to 55.7, which is the loudest fan I've tested, and that had the RPM at 3090. Okay, now for the sound recordings at each voltage, but first the ambient room sound for your reference. The airflow testing is next. As usual, I left the DBA numbers up on the charts for your reference. At six volts with no obstructions, it had an FPM of 340. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 305. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 180. Jumping up to 12 volts with no obstructions, the FPM was at 680. With the mesh panel, it had an FPM of 645. And with the covered panel, it had an FPM of 380. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance, at 6 volts, the average steady state CPU temperature was at 74.8C. At 8 volts, it was at 73.2C. At 10 volts, it was at 72.3C. And at 12 volts, it was 71.4C. Okay, I will be comparing the NFF12 IPPC 3000 PWM that costs around 28 USD to the Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4 120 PWM that costs around 31 USD. I'll also be comparing it to the Noctua NFF12 PWM that costs 22 USD. The Thermalrite B12 Extreme, Extreme, however you want to pronounce that, that costs 16 USD. And the Thermalrite C12 Pro that costs 9 USD. So when comparing the IPPC 3000 to those other fans, we see that it is a good bit louder at each voltage. So on to the airflow. So when voltage equalized and with no obstructions, the B12 Extreme moves the most amount of air with the Pro 4 and the C12 Pro very close behind the IPPC 3000. Again, this is with no obstructions, so this doesn't really mean anything. With the mesh panel, things look pretty similar. The C12 Pro does drop a bit more than the other fans, but not really by too much. In the covered panel testing, there is a large FPM drop across all the fans. However, the B12 Extreme, the IPPC 3000, and the Pro 4 do handle this better than the C12 Pro and the F12 PWM do. Moving on to the CPU cooling performance. So with the fans voltage equalized and with the chart zoomed in, we see all these fans do a pretty damn good job at cooling the CPU. Now at 12 volts, the IPPC 3000 does manage to tie the B12 Extreme for the coolest or lowest CPU temperature. And that is of all the fans that I have ever tested. So that's actually pretty cool. Pun intended, I guess. 
onto the 34 dBA testing. So having all the fans noise equalized to 34 dBA or 12 volts if the fan doesn't make it up to 34 dBA. Now I didn't or couldn't test the IPPC 3000 here because again, I use DC and when using DC this, I couldn't actually get the RPM low enough to have it be at 34 dBA. With that being said, it should be pretty similar to the NFF12 PWM, which then with no obstructions, the NFF12 had an FPM of 245. With the mesh panel, the NFF12 had an FPM of 235. Then with the covered panel, the NFF12 had an FPM of 140, which certainly isn't bad, but isn't really good either. So what do I think of the Noctua NF F12 IPPC 3000 PWM? Did I get it right? Okay, good. The performance is pretty good. It is really loud while doing it, but to get that level of performance, pretty much any fan is going to be pretty loud. So yes, it is louder than others to get that performance, but yeah, every fan to get that performance is going to be objectively loud or subjectively loud, both, because it's pretty loud. But for me personally, it comes down to that there are similar performing fans for much less money, or similar performing fans that are at least a bit quieter, which really just leaves the NFF12 IPPC 3000 PWM in a weird limbo of, like, yeah, you get a lot of airflow, but you also get a lot of airflow with these other fans as well, and those other fans are less money or slightly quieter. It just, yeah, it leaves it in a really weird place. Now, yes, there is obviously the concept of like the pitch noise of the fans, but these things are just so loud. I don't really see on how that would really make any difference because it's just going to be blaring. Like one of these fans from eight inches away is at 55 dBA. Imagine you had like a case full of these for four, five, six of these, like you're going to be up, like you, your ears are going to start bleeding. Now, obviously you're not going to have your head that close to something like that, but like from feet away, you're still going to be extremely loud. So again, like these are not meant for gaming PCs. These are meant for industrial like workshop systems, which then again, I guess having the IP67, for dust and stuff, if you do work in a, like for a CNC machine computer, for a CC, for a CNC machine, sure. Um, now how much extra protection is that really giving you? I, I can't really test that stuff. Sorry. But like for overall performance, there are other fans that cost less, primarily the B12 Extreme, which in everything I've ever tested it in is a really good fan. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. So if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is the HFG Discord server. If you would like to view all my charts, all you have to do is agree to the server rules. And then yeah, you get to see all of my charts. Uh, I did just release a weird video about the Noctua A12X25 5V to see what it was actually capable of. Funny thing is, if you start running things out of spec, they don't quite work properly, but hey, I guess I didn't buy it. Someone else did. Thanks, Joe. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It'll likely be a video along the same lines as this video you just watched. I'll probably put up the B12 Extreme review. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.